Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin. I'm the Relationship Manager at MoWorks. Today I'm chatting with Najib from Export Connect. Thanks for joining us today. Um, did you just want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing at the moment? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I have a background in food and agribusiness exports. So I've been doing that for 25 years, both as, a, as an exporter, um, as well as um, in the public sector for the New South Wales government, um, in the food and agribusiness section, helping them export market development and inward investment. Um, for Food Innovation Australia Limited, so at a national level, I created the market development program there, which is creating the first digital Australian food catalogue, trade show program, capability building program, and most recently, um, consulting to Australian food and agribusinesses around market selection, market entry strategies, pricing strategies, and connecting them with pre-qualified buyers across Asia and the Middle East. How are you being affected by the current situation? In terms of our business, um, it's, it's, you know, it's definitely had an impact because 20% um, of our total revenue is from our market visit program and that's where we prepare companies for international markets like Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, uh, Korea, Taiwan. Then we travel with them to the market and visit the trade and then attend buyer appointments with them. So that's obviously 20% of our revenue completely lost because uh, we can't travel. And 25% of our revenue is from our stakeholder projects, which is where we work with Victorian government, New South Wales government, Queensland government, Tasmanian government, FIAL, um, industry associations like Food and Agribusiness Network, Food SA, where we run workshops and forums. So the one-to-many model, um, and they've all stopped because of the social gathering restrictions. So, so and, and roughly 20% of our bespoke projects, which is where we work individually with companies to, um, on market selection and, and entry strategies and the like, where we've done work for Chobani, Master Food, Simplot, Woolworths, um, and mostly smaller companies, but I mentioned those because these are the ones most people would recognize. Um, about 20% of the projects um, are lead generated from our workshops and from our market visit program. So, so the bespoke projects represent 55% of our turnover, but uh, we anticipate a 20% drop in that because of the, um, the lost lead generation opportunities. Mm -hmm. So from our, from, from, a, from our business perspective, that's uh, the impact that COVID-19 has had. Um, but we're using this period to work on our website and to develop uh, digital solutions to the kinds of services that we offer. And are you currently doing anything to pivot or adapt um, to the current situations? Yeah, look, I think one of the, apart from, you know, coming up with the digital solutions towards sharing market insights and capability building tools, um, um, presenting that in a way that's affordable to companies, um, or maybe even we may offer them for free. We're still looking at the um, financial models for these. Um, uh, we're just looking at what is it we're actually gonna do, and we're working with um, a handful of exporters, current exporters, to make sure that the information that we share and the tools that we share are bang on what they need. Um, it helps that I've, I'm an experienced exporter myself, and it also helps that over the last three years, I've worked with over 55 food companies on their export strategy. So I've got a pretty good idea of uh, what it is that they need. But to be sure, I've still got a bit of an advisory group together that's helping inform what we're delivering. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's, what's going to be interesting is what, is what are our clients doing to pivot? Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 from what I hear, many of them are now looking at having a more local sourcing within their supply chains. Many companies relied on their packaging from China, you know, cardboard boxes, um, some ingredients, you know, that, that could potentially have sourced from Australia, but are sourcing from overseas for price purposes. They're now reviewing that, that strategy and, and looking at potentially sourcing these from Australia um, because of the freight dramas that have happened. Um, many of them have been left waiting for materials to be able to produce 
to deliver to the supermarkets here in Australia and overseas. I think what we'll also see is a, um, and I think we've already started to see it, we'll probably see a lot more within Australia buying Australian products. And I think that is also in turn going to present a great opportunity for export markets. Yeah. And the lower Australian dollar has certainly helped me too. And apart from uh, people sourcing products locally, is there anything else you can predict that will change in the market once the pandemic ends? Look, there might be, there might be a, 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 a bit of a change in um, the channels. You know, this has, has almost forced people to um, buy products using e-commerce channels. This may see a change um, in how they purchase the food, um, having had a taste of going through the e-commerce channel. So, so, so I, think, I think we will see a, a difference in how um, the channel through which they may purchase their products. What's your opinion on the disruption in the supply chain at the moment? Yeah, look, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's going to happen, right? So, so um, from, from the perspective of manufacturing product, we rely on um, some imports to be able to produce the goods. And so freight lanes, um, you know, have been an issue. Um, China being a major supplier of some of the packaging requirements and things like that. Um, then from an export perspective, um, being strong in uh, fresh product, so fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, dairy products with shorter shelf life, chilled meats, um, you know, our, our capacity to export has been, you know, severely hamstrung by the fact that they all normally go in the bellies of commercial passenger flights overseas. And with that all stopping, um, it's dried up the possibility to get product out there. I mean, that has been a major, major, major uh, impact in our, in our industry, in particular from an export perspective. Do you think um, after everything sort of eases, do you think Australia will come out stronger in terms of their local product? Definitely. Definitely. I think, I think we, will be, we will have better producers of product as a result of this. I feel that we will, our brand image internationally will only be enhanced. Yeah. And so we will, you know, we will be the number one, you know, preference. And, uh, and I think, um, you know, our, our, our businesses would have reviewed their supply chain set up so that they could become even more reliable suppliers of product, whether it's going overseas or domestically. Thank you again, um, Najib, for your time. All right. Thank you, Caitlin.